Hi everyone. In this lecture, you will learn about the construction and working operation of squirrel cage induction motor. Okay, this is under AC machines. This is unit three AC machines. Already we discussed some topics in the previous lectures. Those are construction and working of synchronous generator, construction and working of synchronous motor. What are the types of generators? Synchronous, I mean synchronous generators uh, types. Okay, now in this lecture we will learn about the construction advantages, disadvantages, uses of squirrel cage induction motor. Okay, this is the classification of AC machines. I will revise it again. AC machines are two types: AC generators and AC motors. Already we discussed AC generators. I mean synchronous generators. Now we will discuss about AC generate AC motors. That is three phase motors. Three phase motors are two types: synchronous motors, asynchronous motors. Synchronous motors are already discussed in the previous lecture, and now we will discuss about asynchronous motors. I mean induction motors. Actually, induction motors are two types: single phase, single phase and three phase. Under three phase induction motors, again there are two types based on the rotor construction. Three phase induction motors are. Uh, squirrel cage induction motors, slip ring induction motors. So now in this lecture we will discuss about squirrel cage induction motor. In the next lecture we will discuss about slip ring induction motor. Squirrel cage induction motors are mainly used in industrial purpose and also domestic purpose. So 90% of uh, uses is induction motors, squirrel cage type. So squirrel cage, squirrel cage type induction motors are used in 90% of in the real time world. Actually, the stator construction is same as for synchronous generator, synchronous motor, asynchronous motors. The difference is between the uh, between among is the construction of rotor only. So based on the construction of rotor, we will divide in the different types. In this squirrel cage induction motor. The rotor part is completely short circuited with the winding. I mean, there is no brush, there are no slip rings, and coming to the winding construction, here there is no wire winding directly connected with the copper bars. I mean, these are called bars with the made up of copper. These are the copper bars or rotor bars. These are fixed or enclosed by the end rings. This is the first end ring. This is the back side end ring. Enclosed with the end rings with the help of bolts or screws, some uh, some mechanical connection. Okay. Now this is the construction of the rotor. So here the complete operation is when the supply is connected to the stator winding. I mean, when the supply is connected to the stator winding, then an EMF will be induced across the winding. That is alternating EMF. I mean the input supply is. Alternating current. So, alternating three phase currents are connected to the stator winding. Then, immediately the rotating EMF will be induced in the stator winding. The rotating EMF will be induced in the stator winding. And and one more important point is coming to the transformer operation. There are two windings: primary winding and secondary winding. There will be EMF induced in the secondary winding due to the primary winding. Principle is electromagnetic induction principle. So, same principle is applied here. The principle is when the EMF is in induced in the primary winding, the secondary winding also gets induced EMF. Then that EMF is caused to flow the current when the secondary terminals are connected to the load. So here we are connecting, which is directly short circuited. So I mean the secondary winding is directly short circuited with the end rings. So when the short circuited, the EMF will be cause it to flow the current in the internal winding so this current these currents are create the mechanical force in the rotor part so these two emfs i mean primary stator emf and secondary emfs gets opposed and it will rotate in the clockwise or anti clockwise direction that means rotor so please clearly observe in the practical diagram in this diagram if you observe it this is the completely copper bars Coming to the advantages, it is simple construction, and coming to the uh, cost, uh, it is very cheaper compared to other motors. So that these motors are used in widely most rugged construction. I mean, I mean, it is simple construction. Okay, coming to the disadvantages, uh, 
there is no developer torque in the initially so it will rotates with the uh, less speed in the initial stage so slowly it will gets the high torque i mean high speed now coming to the uses in these uh, i mean uses means applications these squirrel cage induction motors are used in cranes lathe machines fans blowers etc these motors are used in applications and these machines are high efficient machines high efficient machines and coming to the desire one more disadvantage that is speed control is not possible in the squirrel cage induction motor because of the rotor is completely short circuited so we cannot uh, increase or decrease the rotor resistance i mean rotor winding resistance so i will compare with the another type that is squirrel cage induction motor in the next video so that you can understand clearly so this is the another diagram if you observe here see here these are the copper bars with the some gap so these copper bars are shorted i mean connected to the end rings this is front side this is back side end rings so these are the copper bars in the line diagram i mean uh, see here clearly you can observe here some lines these are the copper bars this is the end ring front ring and and back end ring so you need to draw the diagram this diagram is you need to draw in the examinations this is very helpful in the examinations so in this uh, explanation you need to draw the standard diagram also thank you thank you very much in the next video we will discuss about slipping induction motor Thank you thank you very much if you have any doubts please comment in the comment box